There is a sound I hear so clear. Lord, I hear it. Yes, I hear it. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Pastor Brandon, and I'm so excited to be with you right now and to share this word for, with you, because as we project our thinking forward and look at this new year, I believe there is something God wants to speak to all of us. And so if you're ready, I'm ready, and I hope you're ready for what God has for you. So there's a verse especially for us as we consider what the start of this new year means. This verse is a wake-up call, okay? In the book of 2 Peter, this verse is for those who need realignment to that which matters most in life, to those who need a bounce back from the insecurity, instability, and inconsistency we often face in life. And what Peter realizes is that if we continue in a spiritual stalemate or not growing in life, there's greater tendency to be unsuccessful and fall along our journey. So Peter believes that when we take this verse that I'm about to share with you, when we take it seriously, we become secure. Okay, get that. Secure despite whatever the day, weeks, and the year brings. Are you ready for the verse? Okay, the verse is this. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, and it says, grow. That's, I mean, that says how it starts. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Ah, the power and wisdom of this verse, man, it's, it's that it, there's safety found in it. You know, and you have to pay close attention to that, how there is safety found in this verse. And the safety is found as you move toward Jesus Christ, because it says grow in the grace and knowledge. Right. So it's saying grow. But now it's telling you where to grow, grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. So there is safety found in moving toward Jesus Christ. And what this means for us this year is this direction is critical yeah the direction in which you grow is critical the problem is we tend to think speed of growth is more critical than direction of growth we get frustrated and give up growth in a certain area simply because we've been dealing with it for the last few years or longer we tend to think that if the thorns in our flesh have been with us this long, then we should just give in to them because growth isn't happening at a what? A reasonable speed. But we say my marriage is still struggling. I still can't get in front of my finances or I still have bitterness around my singleness or I still find myself angry with that family member or I still haven't landed in my career goal, my career goals. Whatever we still find ourselves struggling with, we conclude that because we haven't grown through it yet, then we just ought to give up on it. Take it as life and agree to cut off all growing for that area. Why? Because we tend to think growing is about speed. But the critical element of growing is not speed. I want you to hear me really clearly on this one. The critical element for you this year about growing is not speed, it's direction. This is also why a few verses before verse 18 in 2 Peter, around verse 8, um, there's a verse that you might even be familiar with where Peter says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. And Peter says this because he knows that we tend to be people to forget stuff like this. He says, do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, 
A day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. Why does Peter talk about time? Because it's significant that you know that speed is not the ultimate contributing factor to your success, to your growth. So no matter where you are in your life, no matter what you do, where you live, or what skills you have, we all face the same divine imperative for this new year. And that is growing, all right? Growing. But growing for us means something very specific. This isn't talking about growing your 401k, although you might do that this year. Or it's not talking about growing a six pack, you know, although you might do that too this year. It's not even talking about growing your family, although I suspect that might happen to some this year as well. Rather, the definition of growing is in the word itself. When you break down the word growing, you have what? Grow in G, right? Growing, right? And so what growing means to 2 Peter 3.18 is grow in, I in the G. Grow in G. What do you think the G stands for in growing? Grow in G. G stands for, come on, you can say it. If you said God, you're on the right track because for us, Growing means grow in God. Just think about that for a second. Growing means grow in God. You see, and this is actually the name of the series we're going to be walking through now at the start of the year, spending a few weeks talking about what it means for us to be growing. Every time I say the word growing now in this message, I want you not just to hear the regular word growing. I want you to hear and think of what it means to grow in God. Okay, the verse, therefore, and back to um, 2 Peter, it begs the question, what plan do you have to grow in God this year? What plan do you have for your faith to grow this year? And the power of 2 Peter 3.18 is the reality that there is far more security in growing than there is in holding your ground or staying put right where you are or throwing in the towel because you haven't grown where you in the way you've wanted to grow in the past year or so. Um, you know, or living in a spiritual stalemate. And so Peter realizes that growing is where the real security is and not in just living the spiritual stalemate that we've been living the past few months, possibly. Last year may have been a time when you realized that for whatever reason, you stopped growing. You stopped growing in your faith. And the mere fact, see, get this, the mere fact that we have a verse in the Bible like 2 Peter 3, 18, it means that our spiritual stalemates in life is often part of our faith journey because it's included there. It's included as instruction and encouragement. You see, if it never happened to people early in the church, to those who are early on walking and trying to figure out what it means to walk with Jesus with their entire lives, with their whole lives, if they never had a problem with spiritual stalemate, we wouldn't have a verse like 2 Peter 3.18. You see, so the very fact that it's there indicates that this is a part of our faith journey often. So spiritual stagnation is not what defines our faith. Rather, it's how we respond to God's word when it calls us out of that stagnation and into growing. Hmm? Peter is giving the command to grow because God has shown Peter that if we stand still or maintain our spiritual status quo, then we position ourselves for falling away from what matters most in life, from what matters most for you this year. Now, for reasons that most will not care much about, you know, unless you're like a Bible nerd, which I am, admittedly. 
Scholars uh, agree that there is a challenge. This is a challenging verse to translate, verse 18. It's a challenging verse to translate properly because it doesn't have some of the grammatical syntax that would make it for a much easier read. Therefore, we're left to the surrounding context to best understand how this verse is translated. But it happens to be that 99% of all English Bible translations, all English Bible versions, they translate this verse the same way, with the exception of about two. And that's the King James Version and the New American Bible, okay? Those two versions will translate it a bit differently. I encourage you can check it out, right? But for the, va for the vast uh, majority of all other English translations, they say it this way. Because even taking the minor differences into account, we still arrive at the way we're going to grow in God this year. That 2 Peter 3.18 helps us with getting right at the way we grow in God. The way we're going to be growing. Okay, so you're going to grow through two gifts that Jesus is ready to give you right now. As we, as through, there are two gifts that you're going to be growing through. There's two gifts, excuse me, that you need in order to grow this year. And if you're ready to receive them, Jesus is ready to gift them to you. Those two gifts lay right in the verse we're looking at. Jesus is ready to gift you grace and knowledge. You see, so one, you're going to need grace to grow in the right direction. And this isn't the kind of grace that you give yourself. You know, sometimes I say, well, Brandon, be gracious to yourself, you know, be kind to myself. I have to tell myself that sometimes. But the, that, the kind of grace here in this verse that's going to propel us into growing this year isn't the kind of grace that I can give to myself, and it isn't the kind of grace you can give to yourself. No, this is the grace that only Jesus gives. And so I want you to think about 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, where it says, And God is able to make all grace, somebody say all grace, huh? Make all grace overflow to you so that because you have enough of everything in every way at all times, you will overflow in every good work. Ooh, for some of us, that needs to be our verse of the year. And God is able to make all grace overflow to you. You see, not just the grace you give yourself, but all grace. Grace from others around you. Grace on the job. Grace in your relationships. Grace in your finances. Grace in your faith walk. God is ready to pour out on you all grace. Why? So that this year you can overflow in every good work. Do you see what God has ready God has ready for you? Do you see why growing is going to actually be a game changer for all of us who take this seriously? Growing in God is going to be what positions you to overflow in every good work that 2023 is going to have to offer. Whew. Grace is so important. So secondly and lastly, the gift that you need that Jesus is ready to give us right now, if you're ready to receive it. And you're probably aware of the fact that we know ourselves. We know uh, we don't always know what we need. Right. That even as adults, we tend to lack awareness about the full picture of ways we need to grow. And that even if you were to spend maybe two hours in your, your, your hiding place of praying or even reflecting, that even after a great deal of time, we don't always come out with a full picture of how we need to grow in a year. And you've probably been thinking about that already. What is something different or ways I need to grow this year? But see, here's the good news, because God knows we don't know the full picture, that even as adults, we can't always see the full picture of ways we need to grow. And so as a result, God's son Jesus wants to gift every last one of us the gift of knowledge. Hmm? But what does this really mean? 
I want you to listen to how Apostle Paul speaks this to us, and then I'm going to let you go. Because in Colossians 1.9, it says such a good word. In fact, it says, we always pray that God will show you everything he wants you to do and that you may have all the wisdom and understanding his spirit gives. You see, this is knowledge. As we're thinking about, well, what do I do this year? What do I change this year? Or how is this year going to bring me into where I really need to be or doing what I really need to be doing? Well, this is why Paul was praying over the church in Coloss when he, when he says, in fact, we always pray that God will. And this is my prayer for you today. This is my prayer for you. We're joining, I'm joining in with Paul and praying this over beyond church, over you who are listening, over you who, are, who is listening to this message. We're, I'm praying that God will show you everything he wants you to do. That means you're not going to have it all in and of yourself, that God is going to have to show you some things for this year. That God is going to show you everything he wants you to do and that you may have all the wisdom and understanding his spirit gives. Wow. So how do you come to know what areas need growing this year? Two words. Ask Jesus. You ask Jesus. This is how your growing this year must continue. It must continue with these gifts, grace and knowledge, grace and and knowledge. Say it with me. Grace and knowledge. Your year must continue with these gifts that you're going to need for the year ahead. But get this. It's not only for this new year ahead that you will need to ensure you are growing, but it's for all future years ahead. For all future years ahead. Did you see what the last part of 2 Peter 3.18 says? Your growing this year is not just about this year, but it's about all years. The commitments you make to growing this year will pave a path so far beyond your present moment. Your greatest imaginations cannot perceive it. But if you could only see what God has in store for you as you commit to growing, you would have no frustrations or worry about the future and what it held. Here at Beyond Church, we wanna help you in growing this year, all right? Because all the years ahead are on the line. That's why for this month, I want to invite you to get closer in what's happening here at Beyond Church. Take a baby step toward becoming involved. That may look like simply attending our next Beyond Sunday on January 15th. We're going to be doing it in person, Jesse Turner Center. That might be your baby step in growing for 2023, that you're ensuring you're going to be with us in person even on January 15th. Or it may look like letting us know how you're doing by completing a connection card. You see, that is a baby step. A baby step could look like a willingness to help serve food during our mealtime on Beyond Sundays. I want to encourage you to take a baby step toward growing, grow in God. Another baby step toward growing and lastly is making a personal commitment to hearing the rest of the messages in the series this month, where for the next few weeks, we're going to walk through practical ways of growing, practical ways of, for you to be able to grow in God. Next week, the message is going to be on reviewing and resetting your devotional rhythm. And I'm going to talk a bit about some of the myths of devotionals, but ways that you can actually reset your devotional life this year. That's next week. After that, there's going, going to be a message on determining your spiritual goals for this year. You know, I don't know about you, but we can all use help, especially myself, in determining the spiritual goals that we ha can have for this year. That's going to be that weekend. And then we'll complete the series with a really biblically powerful yet highly practical strategy for leveling up your growing in 2023. You don't want to miss it. Perhaps making a commitment to listen in can be your first baby step this year to grow in God. And if that's you, you're ready to grow in God. 
you know, you're ready, no matter what it might even look like, but you're ready to take a baby step. Because you don't know what it looks like, you're ready to take a baby step and just to commit to growing. If that's you today, at the beginning of this year, I want to pray for you right now. That prayer, like Paul prayed to the, Coloss to the church in Coloss, I want to pray for you, strength over you. I want to pray focus and discipline in your mind, renewed focus for you this year so that you can grow in God and receive all the grace that you need to do every good work this year. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for whichever person, whoever is listening right now, you see them, you know their name, you know the circumstances of their life and the conditions of their heart. And so Father, would you help them grow in you this year? Therefore, they want to make a commitment, but a commitment, but may not be sure what it's like, or maybe experiencing some trauma from when they made a previous commitment of what it meant to grow in their faith. But what we saw through your word today, that the very fact that we have 2 Peter 3:18 is testimony to the fact that falling in our faith, that having a hard time with our faith, is actually a part of the faith journey, and that it, the fall itself is not the shape of our faith journey but it's one step on that journey. So God, would you call us back to you this year? Father, for we wanna make a new step of faith, a new step towards your cross this year. And we don't really know what it looks like, but God, we wanna believe your word anew, that it has great things planned for us this year. So Jesus, would you do like only you can do, give us a new heart so that we would trust you as we learn and we take a step to grow in God. We receive your wonderful gifts right now in the name of Jesus by faith. We receive grace and we receive the knowledge of you. It's in your power that we pray, God. Amen. Wow. Well, something said that was encouraging to you or you feel like you want to connect some more reach out to us. We are here to connect with you in any way we can. Absolutely. And if you're interested in being a part of the team here at Beyond Church, we want you to save the date for January 22nd, Tacos with the Team. And as we start this new year, I want to encourage you to give to Beyond Church and to the work that God is doing through the mission and the vision here. Your giving makes such a difference for a new year of ministry and impact. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Bye-bye.